All right, everybody. Um, this week, uh, start of a, a good week for us. We're luckily joined by um, Victor Altamarino, who um, made his UFC debut uh, a weekend before last. Um, Vic, first of all, man, how you doing? How's the body feeling? And obviously, you know, weeks since the fight. So how are you feeling physically and mentally? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling really good. The fight really didn't take a toll on me. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, I know I won that fight, split decision, close. But, you know, I feel great. I was able to get back to training the following Monday, immediately after the, the weekend. I got back and we woke up business as usual and went back to training. So as far as the damage was concerned, there was none. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the first question I want to ask you was despite the, the loss, obviously a split decision, close fight. Um, you know, one judge actually had it for you as well. Are you still proud of the performance that you put on considering it was a UFC debut? It's a big moment for you, obviously, you and your family. So are you still proud of the performance that you put on um, on that night for your debut? Um, I am. I'm proud of what I've achieved with my team, you know, getting to the UFC. I'm proud of everything that has entailed to get to where we are. When it comes to the performance itself, I don't think there'll be a, a fighter that will say that they were happy or proud, even with the win. You know, there's always that um, that thing missing that keeps people from just being complacent. And in the sport that I am, you know, I don't think there'll be a fighter that would ever say, you know, I'm really happy. I'm really proud of that performance. There's always going to be something. And that's the case with me, you know, even though I know I displayed a really good fight. I know I won the fight. Um, I know there's still a lot that it could have been better. I know there's still many things that I could do to make it a finish rather than just going to the judges. So, you know, despite everything, I'm happy with my performance. As far as being proud, you know, that, that takes a lot more effort <laughs> than to, yeah. to feel that. Yeah, exactly. So something I noticed when I was watching the fight is that you will switch stances a lot, but you still maintain a high degree of movement and fluidity when you switch your stances. So out of my own curiosity, which stance was harder for you to learn in your martial arts journey? Was it Southpaw or Orthodox? Which one was much more difficult for you? When it came to kicks, I began with Southpaw. In traditional martial arts, you always begin with your left leg out in the fighting stance, being your left, your front leg. So when you begin um, in traditional martial arts, you begin in an Orthodox stance. And so I learned to kick that way and this I'll develop my, so then whenever I started MMA, I really like having my left as a, as my power leg to be behind me. And then I had to be able to learn how to box from my southpaw stance and then switch it around, learn how to kick from my southpaw stance with my lead foot being what used to be my rear foot and so forth and so on. And as it progresses, as the skill progresses, there there is no more left or there's no more right there's only targets and then techniques that you can to hit those targets you know at a certain point there it doesn't matter which signify and you execute a technique Hmm. we obviously you know there's a lot of um People that come out and say it is, you know, you get the nerves and the jitters about making a UFC debut. It's obviously very different, I, I imagine, to that of a um, fight on the Contender Series. But considering you've been fighting for so long, um, could you feel the difference, you know, in the, in the energy of the event and how you felt personally walking out at the Apex? I always feel very different from fight to fight. Very seldom do I feel the same way that I did the fight before. And, um, it doesn't, I don't know if, if I attribute that to being my UFC debut, but like I mentioned, I always feel different no matter what fight it is. Every fight feels different to me. Every fight has its own essence. Every fight has its own thing that makes that experience unique. Mm. And being my UFC debut, it was a unique experience and I couldn't really compare it to any other experience that I've had before in previous fights. And therefore, I don't know if the way I felt was because it was my UFC debut or simply because every fight to me is different. But it was very exciting. And I can tell you that one thing that I do feel and I do attribute it to be my UFC debut is that I was very grateful and very 
just honored to be on that stage with with the world. Mm. And so we've seen that after the loss that, you know, you're staying really positive and focused on, you know, not leaving future fights to the judges. And we recently spoke to coach Eric Nixick and got his thoughts on sort of the problem with judging in MMA at the moment. In your opinion, is it a detriment to the sport that fighters are having to say, I can't leave it to the judges, considering that when you're fighting the best of the best, it can be really difficult to get a finish. You're right. Yeah, when you're fighting the best of the best, it can be re- difficult to be a, to be a finish. And when it comes to the judges, you know, MMA is a pretty young sport. So I imagine that as the years progress, the judging also adapts to the sport. I know a lot of judges for MMA are also boxing judges or wrestling only judges. And I can only imagine that as the sport progresses, new up and coming judges will come. Judges that have probably fought themselves, not in boxing, but in MMA, judges that have studied or practiced MMA themselves. As as the sport grows, I feel like the judges themselves will also become more competent for that specific type of event. And, you know, I attribute, I attribute the judging right now to the fact that MMA is a pretty young sport and judges are still trying to get a grasp on how it's evolving where are the capitalizing moments of a fight Hmm. what are the important moments of the fight where does the emphasis come you know does it come in control does it come in damage you know things like that are still being learned by judges again the sport is relatively new when it comes to the combat Hmm. yeah and in terms of in terms of this year your plans obviously you know everything's getting back on track in terms of fights and, and COVID and restrictions and all that sort of stuff. So this year, you obviously made your debut two weeks ago. So what's your plan for this year? Do you want to have a quick turnaround or, or are you going to take some time off? Obviously, I know you said you were back in the gym and, and started grinding straight away. So is that your is that your plan for this year is to get back in and get a few more fights in? Of course, yeah. Let's a quick turnaround. You know, one of the good things about not having any damage is that we can get back to it. You know, we're still on the diet. We're still on weight. You know, we, we didn't suffer any damage. And because of that, we can just stay on weight and then be ready for a short notice call. You know, quick turnaround. As soon as we have a, a news of any card, you know, we are ready as a team. We are always maintaining ourselves at least two to three weeks out in the event that we call it get a short notice fight. So my plan is to fight as many times as I can this year if my body is able to do so and after this fight my body is able to do so so I would like to get back in as quick as possible yeah and you know that's one of the things that fans will often love is the fighters that will take the short notice fights or will have quick turnarounds and stay active but one thing I wanted to ask you is martial arts in itself is often a journey of highs and lows it's you know a journey of peaks and valleys sometimes Uh, when you are going through those lows of the sport or those lows of your martial arts journey what are the ways that you sort of mentally stay the course and that you mentally stay strong? Well, I've realized that, you know, a loss is by far not the worst thing that has ever happened to me in my life, you know, and I've overcome way many things. Of course, a loss is not something that I want. It's not something that I received well at all, just because it's not the worst thing that has happened to me. It's not something that I welcome. you like, oh, cool, I lost, whatever. You know, but it just helps me to reevaluate. It's like, okay, what have I forgotten through my victories that led to this loss? Where, in which moment did I lose in the inspiration to fight as hard as I did whenever I was winning? Did I lose an inspiration? You know, it really, mm-hmm. it, it really makes me think about the many things that I can do better and of course, I dwell a little bit on, you know, being down, being sad, being upset, and what have you. Mm. But after those emotions come, the the progress for growth is when it begins. Once you get past that, you're like, okay, I, I got it. I lost. I acknowledge that. Let's now grow from here. Let's now do something about it, you know? So, and I think that's the spirit of the fighter. I mean, Any fighter will tell you, you know, if if you're not going to get back up and fight again, then are you really a fighter to begin with? Hmm. 
There we go. You hear me now? Sorry. So, uh, back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, obviously, a few years ago, the um, the flyweight division was um, pretty close to, to getting cold and, and getting removed completely from the UFC. Um, now, we believe it's honestly one of the strongest, if not the strongest division in the UFC. Seeing this resurgence and a renewed interest in the flyweight division and, and flyweight fighters, has it put an extra spark in your own in your own and, and uh, in your own career and motivates you a bit more seeing that the the, 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 um, the division so strong now? Of course, yeah, of course. It, not only that, but it also creates a new level of fighters. So not only does it inspire me to you know be at that league, be in that level, be among these people, but it also lets me know that. Because of that reason, the level of the division is now going to increase significantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's one hundred percent. I mean, do you have anyone in mind for your next fight? Is there anyone particularly that you're looking for in terms of fights mm, next? Or not just, really. No one in no? mind. No, no, no one in particular. I just want to fight and show the world the skill that we have. Awesome. All right, Vic. Well, look, man, we appreciate you giving us some time. I know it's late there, so. Look, we appreciate you jumping on and give us your, give us your, um, give us your time. So, look, man, we'd love to chat to you again in the future. You know, obviously, next time you get a win, we'll um, definitely have you back on, man. And, uh, yeah, it's been great to chat to you and great to meet you. Sounds great. It was great having you guys. Thank you. Awesome. No worries, man.